it's 10 a.m. here in Seoul, and I'm Kim Dami. Starting today, a key summertime military drill involving Seoul and Washington is taking place. It's designed to better combat and counter increasing nuclear threats and cyber attacks coming from North Korea. And President Yoon suk yeol is about to deliver remarks on the 11-day exercise, which is why we are breaking into our regular programming to provide you live coverage of that. Before we connect to the presidential office over in Yongsan, where Yoon is about to speak, let's talk about this joint military drill, better known as the Ulti Freedom Sh- Freedom Shield. It's a major combined military and civil exercise between South Korea and the U.S. It includes a computer-based simulation and a combined field uh, training exercises as well as urgy civil defense drills involving government agencies. Uh, what's notable about this year's edition is that for the first time, the drills will include a scenario in case of a nuclear attack from North Korea. Now, the joint training will also involve more combined field training than last year, with 48 outdoor drills, including field maneuvers and live fire exercises on land, at sea, and in the air. Again, we are breaking into our regular programming to provide you live coverage of President Yoon suk yeols remarks on South Korea and the United States joint military drills. They are better known as the Ulti Freedom Shield. We'll soon head over to the presidential office over in Yongsan. Now, before we do that, let's talk about this joint military drill. It's a major combined military and civil drill between South Korea and the U.S. It includes a computer-based simulation, combined field training exercises, and urgy civil defense drills, which involve government agencies. Now, again, I do have to point out what's notable about this year's military drill is that the drills will, for the first time, include a real scenario in case of a nuclear threat coming from the north. The joint training will also involve more combined field training than they had last year. It'll have 48 a total of outdoor drills. Uh, they will involve field maneuvers and live fire exercises on land, at sea, and in the air. Now, for those of you who are just joining us at the moment, we are breaking into our regular programming to provide you live coverage of President Yoon suk yeols remarks on South Korea and the U.S. 11-day uh, key summertime military drill, better known as the Ulti Freedom Shield. Now, these are the annual summertime key military drills that they are conducting for the next 10 days starting today. Now, again, let's talk about this uh, joint military drill. These are the Urji Freedom Shield. Uh, it looks like now we see President Yoon suk has entered the room. We'll come back afterwards. Let us begin the cabinet meeting. Ever since our government took office, the third Ulti Freedom Shield exercise has begun. This is a training exercise to review government-level emergency preparedness plans in preparation for a national emergency and to strengthen wartime transition and national total war capability. Currently, we're facing the most reckless and irrational provocations and threats from North Korea in the world. The North Korean regime is ignoring the miserable lives of its people and is focused on developing nuclear weapons and missiles. Recently, it has threatened our society with very vulgar provocations such as GPS jamming attacks and scattering of trash balloons. As seen in the Ukraine war and the conflicts in the Middle East, war can break out at any time. The nature of war has also changed. It has been carried out in a hybrid form that mixes regular warfare, irregular warfare, cyber warfare, and even fake news-based public opinion warfare and psychological warfare. In such situation, it is difficult to clearly draw a line between the military and civilian areas. So. A national all-out war posture is needed 
in which all members muster their strengths. In January, the government held a central integrated defense meeting to discuss ways to establish an all-out security posture in which the civilian government and military are united. And we came up with specific policy alternatives considering the recent war situation and the expected North Korean provocations. Against this backdrop, this exercise that is taking place from today will focus on mastering integrated procedures to respond to various crisis situations, including North Korea's gray zone and military complex provocations and strikes on important national facilities. Each ministry and military should keep this in mind and pay special attention to the following. First of all, we must strengthen our response posture to North Korea's gray zone provocations such as the spread of false information and fake news and cyber attacks. Anti-state forces that threaten, threaten liberal democracy are active everywhere around our society. North Korea, from the outset of the war, will mobilize these people and will use violence, public opinion manipulation, propaganda, and instigation to increase national confusion and divide public opinion. We must actively seek ways to block such confusion and division and to strengthen the will of all citizens to resist. In addition, transportation, communications, electricity, such infrastructure, as well as water supply and key national facilities, including nuclear power plants, must maintain their functions even in wartime to protect the stability of our society and secure the ability to continue the war. We must thoroughly prepare defense measures to these, for these facilities and strengthen response training. This week, Thursday, we are going to uh, have civil defense training nationwide, and this will be thoroughly preparing for North Korea's air raid. I would like to ask all citizens to actively participate in vehicle movement, control, and evacuation training according to the government's instructions. We must we ask the military to focus on the uh, substantiality of joint ROK U.S. military exercises and training. In particular, we plan to significantly expand and implement the ROK U.S. joint field training this year. We expect this to be an opportunity to enhance our ability to conduct joint operations and to demonstrate the might of the ROK U.S. alliances. Many UN member states folk soldiers will participate in this training. We should use this as an opportunity to strengthen solidarity with the international community through substantial training with our military. The freedom and prosperity that the Republic of Korea enjoys today were not obtained for free. Only a strong security posture can protect the safety of our people and liberal democracy. This Ulti Freedom Shield exercise for it to be conducted in, in a substantial manner, I hope that the office, uh, the presidential office and the government ministries will fulfill their respective responsibilities and roles, and all related organizations, including local governments, military, police, and fire departments, will work together. This year, most of elementary schools around the country will start their second semester. Starting this semester, Nulbom School will be expanded to all elementary schools nationwide, including 6,185 elementary schools and 178 special schools. 80% of all first graders which is approximately 280,000 students are expected to join for this program, and with sufficient support in terms of personnel, space, and programs and venues, all first grade students who wish to participate will be able to do so. Nilbom School is the core of the public care or national care system in which government is responsible for the care and education of children. All our children 
children have the right to receive fair opportunities and diverse and high-quality education. Nilbong School is an active investment in the future of our children. It is the national responsibility which should be fulfilled in order to reduce the burden of parenting on parents and solve the urgent low birth rate problem. I have always emphasized that the most important policy of our government is Nilbom School. Nilbom School should be successfully implemented so that happy laughter of our children can be heard around the elementary schools around the country. So to do so, we have to pay closer attention. The government, local governments, and the private sector will all become a one team and join forces to work for the future of our children. Last week, the Paris Summer Olympics came to a close. The national athletes of the Republic of Korea and the coaches attended with the smallest number uh, ever, however, achieved the best results ever. Our athletes' efforts to challenge their limits gave the nation a great impression. Regardless of victory or failure, the fighting spirit and passion our athletes demonstrated were the pride of the Republic of Korea. Athletes and coaches, I would like to thank you for your hard work. In addition, from August 28th, Paris Paralympics will begin. 177 athletes of the Republic of Korea will passionately challenge their limits, and this will also move our citizens. We will once again cheer them on with enthusiasm on their 12-day journey of overcoming limits with our people. That was our live coverage of President Yoon delivering remarks on South Korea and the U.S. Joint Key Summertime Military Drill, also known as the Uchi Freedom Shield Exercise, and also Yoon thanking South Korean Olympians for their sacrifice and their hard work. We're bringing you more details on our upcoming newscast at noon Korea time. Until then, goodbye.